Hi everyone, this is the second uh, part of AE. We're looking at the equilibrium real GDP and the multiplier. Now, last week we learned about AE. Eh? The components of AE are the same as AD. So you'll see IGXM, yeah? And we look mainly at consumption and also uh, savings uh, habits of uh, people. So uh, we studied about the consumption function and the savings function and then uh, we drew a couple of diagrams. Okay, uh, so today we're going to look at uh, how everything comes together into this AE model where you will learn the second multiplier. All right, you first learn of the multiplier in money and banking. So now this will be the second multiplier, right? Let's uh, carry on. Now, um, other than uh, consumption, uh, you know that your uh, AE consists of your I, G, X, M. Okay, so um, the way that the shift is very similar to A, D. Alright, um, so uh, I will not go much into detail. Just so remember, uh, investment is uh, made by private companies, okay, by firms, alright, by businesses, okay. So uh, they will make uh, investments based on factors, alright, like your real interest rate, expectation of future profits, and so on and so forth, okay. Now, similarly, the government will plan to spend more or less depending on what is the ongoing government uh, fiscal policy. Uh, you learn that um, there is expansionary or contractionary fiscal policy. The government may choose to spend more uh, or less, okay, and this will affect AE. So why do they want to spend more or less depends on the situation, okay, uh, which uh, the government will respond uh, with a certain policy. Okay, uh, similarly, net exports refers to planned spending, but uh, it's by other countries to purchase your country's things, okay. What will decide whether... Um, Countries want to buy, or more, buy more or less of your things depending on how rich or poor they are. That means we are looking at whether real, their real GDP is higher or lower um, and ongoing exchange rate. Okay, we'll be covering exchange rate this coming week um, uh, in the lecture. Okay, so uh, remember the goal uh, and the online lecture will be up uh, next week. It's a not easy topic. Uh, it's not an easy topic, so please remember to uh, learn it well. Now, so putting everything together, okay, we have an equilibrium point whereby AE represents total demand for goods and services in the economy and real GDP represents the total supply of goods and services in the economy. And in an equilibrium situation, these two should be equal, okay. That means all the goods that uh, people want, right, should be equal to all the goods that's being produced in the economy. Alright, so our equilibrium point is given by AE must be equals to real GDP or Y. Okay, A equals to Y becomes our equilibrium condition. Okay, later on when you see a diagram, you must always look for the point where does AE um, uh, is equivalent to Y. Okay, now uh, before we look at the AE curve, uh, you should understand that the AE curve is upward sloping. Okay, because your uh, consumption uh, function is upward sloping and consumption is part of your AE. Okay, so the A curve looks, uh, the shape looks like the consumption function. Okay, now how is our A curve uh, derived? Now A is equivalent to C I G X M, yeah. So it's a totaling up of all these components. Okay, so everything add up together. All right, your A curve will be like this. Okay, now. Uh, it is upward sloping because uh, of the income induced component or the income dependent components are like um, your consumption part of it and your imports. Okay, now it doesn't start from zero because there's a presence of your uh, autonomous components like your IGX. Okay, so it starts from a certain amount. Okay, because when your real GDP is zero, there's uh, some kind of amount for your IGX. So A starts from a certain point, okay, not from zero. Okay, now you don't have to know this uh, diagram, it's just to show you how A curve uh, is derived. Now, uh, in this uh, chapter, we use a lot of 45 degree line. Okay, now uh, we have to use a 45 degree line when we draw the A curve. Now, why? Uh, now, if you recall earlier, we talked about the equilibrium point, uh, is AE is equivalent to Y. Okay, AE represents total demand and Y represents total supply. So A equals to Y is our equilibrium point. Now when we draw this dotted line, okay, it's 45 degree, that means again it slices this angle into exact halves. So along this dotted line, okay, AE is always equals to Y. So this Y dotted line gives us all the points where 
uh, equilibrium uh, um, exists. So all these points shows you where A is equals to Y. Okay? So when we put the A in, like this, okay? A few things you can notice. First, like we mentioned, your A doesn't start from zero. Okay? There's autonomous components over here. Let's say um, consumption is 2 million, uh, investment is 10, G is 5 million, NX 20. So you add up all the autonomous components. All right, your A is 37 million. Okay, now, uh, so where A, e, uh, A will go up um, as uh, real GDP goes up, okay, like your consumption function. So where it cuts your Y line, that means where it cuts all the points of equilibrium. Remembering that your A, E, uh, must be equivalent to Y at equilibrium. So on the diagram, let's go back and take a look. This is the equilibrium, all right, where A, E cuts Y. Okay, so remember Y shows you all the points of equilibrium. So A cuts Y, so this is the equilibrium, and this is the equilibrium real GDP. Okay, so it occurs where A is equals to Y. So whenever you draw a diagram, please locate the point. Huh? Now you can observe the multiplier effect when the A curve starts to shift. Okay, uh, as to why it shifts, uh, let's take a look at the conditions uh, that will cause your A curve to shift. That means the A amount starts to change. Autonomous components uh, in A starts to change. A will shift higher or lower. Okay. Now we mentioned earlier that which are the autonomous uh, items is your I, G, and X. Okay. M is income dependent. C is partially income dependent. If you remember the uh, consumption function. Okay. So I, G, X can change on its own, and when it changes, it will pull A higher or lower depending on how these items have changed. Okay. Now, uh, remember another thing, income dependent on income induced items cannot change without your real GDP changing first, okay? So, uh, in usual kind of uh, situation, it's your autonomous components that starts to change, okay? And C, uh, and M, uh, C partially, okay, and M will start to change only when your real GDP uh, changed uh, at the end of the day, okay? So, usually, uh, AE changes is initiated by I, G, or X. Now, the events that change your A curve is very similar to your AD, just that uh, we don't have consumption so often now because consumption is now only partially autonomous. Okay, if you remember your consumption function, your A plus BYD. Okay, so only A is autonomous, BYD is not. Alright, most of the events or the change in A is coming from IG uh, and X. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, what happens when A shifts and how do we observe the multiplier effect. Now, in this diagram, we have an example of a shift in AE. Now, you can uh, look at it from the perspective of either AE1 to AE2 or AE2 to AE1. Okay, it doesn't matter. But what we want to look at is, when there's a change in AE, yeah? we measure AE by this axis. So, when AE changes, it will cause a much larger impact in your real GDP on this real GDP axis. Okay? Now, that means AE changing will cause a larger impact on the wider uh, economy, your real GDP. Now, this is the part that's very different uh, between your AD model and your AE model. Your ADS model, uh, the changes were proportional uh, when we calculate uh, changes. We assume that it was proportional. Your consumption up 2 million, your real GDP up 2 million. But in this case, all right. Uh, changes in the AE are magnified before it reaches the real uh, uh, GDP uh, side. Okay, so whether AE is rising or falling, it will cause a larger impact on your real GDP. Okay, uh, in the same direction. So this is uh, one of the major difference between your AE model and your ADAS. Now, therefore, how do we calculate the change in your real GDP? Is Changes in your AE must undergo a multiplier effect, okay, a K multiplier effect, okay, before it reaches the real GDP. So this formula tells you that changes in real GDP is magnified, okay, by this multiplier. Small changes in AE, whether higher or lower, will be, mul uh, will be multiplied or magnified into real GDP, okay. Now why do we observe a multiplier effect? What is it? How does it occur in real life? Now let's take a look. Huh? Now let's uh, assume that now uh, a company, maybe Apple, uh, just invested a uh, amount of uh, money in Singapore, setting up a new factory. Okay. Now to get the factory operating, it must hire people. Okay. 
Now, uh, who can you hire? Uh, one could be those people uh, who are not working or to get people to come over from another company you offer a higher salary. Now, whatever is the case, uh, you have uh, more people earning uh, a salary now, previously they were, they were not, uh, and or people who are now earning a higher salary. Okay. Now, when uh, people earn a higher salary, they will tend to consume more, they buy more things. Okay. Now, some of the things that they buy will be back uh, from this company, will be back from this company. Okay. So let's say if they earn um, a higher wage, okay, they may buy some Apple products from Apple. So uh, the company has more businesses, they will make more investment and then they hire more people and the process go on and on and on. Okay. Now, of course, the whole process, the multiplier effect is not indefinite. Huh? Um, you observe that every time it comes to a certain point, uh, the effect will be reduced. Now, consumption is the point whereby uh, every time there's an increase in income, all right, a bit of the income will be drained away as savings. Now, recall in the earlier part of the chapter, uh, we uh, learned that people have an inclination to spend the MPC, people also have an inclination to save the MPS. Okay, so people will not spend, uh, most likely not spend uh, all of their increase in income. So if they earn maybe one thousand dollars higher, perhaps they will spend uh, six seven hundred uh, more and then save the rest. So every time there's an increase uh, in income, all right, people will save some of that away and then spend the rest. So the company will not receive all right, the full business all right, of this increase in income. Only partial, okay? But uh, it could be a larger part, all right? but still partial, okay? Now, because people save money, all right, some of the income, increased income that saved away, it gives this entire process a definite size, okay? It allows us to uh, calculate what is the effect of this multiplier in the same way as money creation whereby the triple R where banks are forced to keep some money as a required reserve it gives the whole process a definite size otherwise uh, it will be indefinite okay so how do we calculate uh, the size of the multiplier here so very simple we use the limiting factor which is the MPS okay and we take 1 over MPS all right now remember that uh, you only have uh, the other inclination is MPC, so you can use one minus MPC as well. All right. So we use one over MPS again. Use the ratio. You will obtain a K number, which is the multiplier. Now in this model, uh, the more people save, the less additional business uh, the company will receive at the end of the day. So for uh, impact. Uh, for the impact to be large, people must be willing to spend. So therefore, the smaller the MPS, okay, the larger will be the size of the multiplier. So people must be willing to spend. Okay, otherwise, any increase in income, people will just save it away and the business will not receive more businesses right, from the increase in income. Now, in this last part, we use the AE model to explain business cycle. Okay? Uh, why is it that there is a certain period of economic growth in a typical economy and why is it there's a period of recession? Okay, the AE model can help us to understand that uh, in ways that the ADAS could not. Now that's because in this model we assume that businesses cannot make changes to your production immediately okay, or instantaneously uh, as we see in um, ADAS. Okay? Some uh, uh, observation and some uh, planning is required. Okay, let's go through the process and uh, see how it works out. Now, initially, we are here at this equilibrium point. A1 cuts Y, okay? Now, when A goes up, all right, temporarily, this is your interim point. Now, what's happening in the economy is that firms are going to realize that total demand is not higher than total supply, all right? And this will, this will lead to a shortage. Now, this will be reflected in an unplanned inventory decrease. That means at this point here, firms will realize that they were anticipating this amount of goods left over. Now, it's much less than that. Okay. Now, this will prompt them in the next period when they plan to increase production to deal with this unplanned inventory decrease. Okay. So, this will force them to uh, plan to produce more only when they start planning again. Okay. 
So uh, when that happens, then your real GDP will increase and you'll find yourself here. Okay? Now, so this is a more realistic take on what is happening in the economy, whereby in the actual operation of businesses, you can't make changes immediately as and when as you want. For example, you may have uh, signed contracts with your suppliers, you may have uh, made some agreements with your customer, you can't make changes so quickly, especially when you're a big company. So only when you uh, plan again, maybe uh, the next quarter or even the next half year or year, then you start to make changes to your production levels. So it will take some time, okay? So uh, on the diagram, you can see that um, the old equilibrium point okay, is here. All right, it seems as if you got to the new equilibrium point immediately. But no, in real world, you are trapped in this uh, interim point for a while until this whole process goes through and then you reach your uh, new equilibrium point. Okay, and the same goes for a recession mode. Let's go ahead and take a look. Now, uh, in this case, AE falls or IGX uh, could have fallen. So initially you were here, all right, AE1, okay, and then at the end of the process, you got to here. Now, again, the process is not immediate, okay. Temporarily, you are trapped in this uh, interim position, okay, whereby firms uh, discover that because of the fall in AE, Total supply is now higher than total demand. Your AE blue color solid line is now below the dotted line. Remember the dotted line represents total supply. Eh? So you're now below that. Okay. Now this means that there's a surplus in the um, company's uh, uh, inventory. This will be uh, seen as an unplanned inventory increase. More stocks are now being left over. Okay. Now when that happens, when the firm start planning again, they will then reduce production and then you get to your uh, new real GDP uh, level at the end of the day. Okay. Now what we can say about this entire process is that number one, it will take time and whenever it is uh, going through this process, the whole economy will be undergoing a period of recession when firms reduce uh, production. Obviously, some people is going to lose their jobs and things like that. Okay, so it gives uh, this model a concept of time. All right, the whole process needs time to get through. Now, this uh, way of looking at the economy is more realistic because uh, uh, this is what we experience, right? Where the economy undergoes a period of economic expansion and then a period, uh, some other time, a period of economic recession. So it doesn't change or. Uh, it doesn't uh, recover immediately or instantaneously as your ADAS uh, would depict. Okay, so in some ways, uh, this model helps to uh, cover some of the shortfalls of ADAS. Okay, now uh, take a look at the rest of your tutorial questions. Um, I shall be posting the answers to the rest of the tutorial uh, on LMS uh, soon. Okay, see you guys.